If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. King T'Challa's heart rate has fallen to 31 beats per minute. Hmm, I guess it was always going to be tough to figure out how to open this film, but I'm not sure experiencing the death of T'Challa was the best choice. It's not that I disagree, it's that I don't know your reasoning. Why isn't it the best choice? I have my reasons why I'd have preferred this not to be the case, but unlike you, I'm not sinning the movie. What I'm saying is, there should be a justification here and not just this thing bad. I know T'Challa's still alive and conspiracy theorists, but that coffin sure seems super light. Yeah, I know these women warriors are very strong, but that coffin is empty. Jeremy answers himself cliche with the dash of pointing out obvious things ex machina. You know I hate logos, but I got chills from this very respectful and moving tribute to Chadwick Boseman and the work that he put into this character. It is truly a sin that he was taken from us so soon. I agree, but are we only removing sins for logos that feature people who died? I mean, think about what you're saying here for a second. This evolution of the Flipbook logo has featured many actors who have done great work, but they're not worthy unless they pass away? This kind of sets a dangerous precedent, wouldn't you say? Okay, now I'm just confused from a storytelling perspective why we needed the opening funeral scene. We all knew the character of T'Challa would be deceased in this sequel, so I'm not sure why they showed us his sister finding out and then his funeral if they were only going to then jump one year forward in time. Why not just start there? The silent Chadwick-themed Marvel logo was a beautiful tribute. Would have made a much better opening. Why did you film the funeral? Because they have to immediately address the elephant in the room that was Chadwick's passing, and because they respected the man, they gave him a movie funeral that allowed fans to partake. It's kind of blatantly obvious. I now give the floor to Her Majesty Queen Ramonda. But literally only two other people have spoken. There has been all of 55 seconds of opening discourse. And? This film shows that only the United States and France has an issue with Wakanda's reluctance to share vibranium, or at least the only two that were willing to speak on it. If they're not featured in the story, do you really need to hear from Spain or the UK on this? Oi, those blackies there, yeah? They don't share the magic metal so that we can have fancy plates for our seams on Ghost. These light daggers only seem to electrocute this guy instead of going right through him like they did the gun earlier. But you show clear evidence they did penetrate the guy. Our foremothers gave us its beer because it is precise, elegant, and deadly. Oh, they're doing the thing where they have a conversation while fighting, so we know it's easy. What's the problem? Should they have done this action scene silently? Would that have been better for you? Like, who gives a shit? Proof of the involvement of a member state is being uploaded to your mobile devices as we speak. These assholes at the UN all have a hard-on for vibranium weapons, but are not concerned about whatever Queen Ramonda just used to upload files to all of their government's secured mobile devices. You mean the technology they derived from vibranium, the thing you said they were interested in? I thought you retired! I thought I had too. They said that machine had a one in a billion chance of finding vibranium. I'm beginning to feel like, whether it needs it or not, every sentence in this movie is going to be followed up with one about vibranium. Well, considering vibranium is Wakanda's claim to fame, and the fact this film's plot revolves around an entirely independent society also having the material, yeah, they should totally talk about steel. It's highly suspect that this person's blood pressure is exactly 120 over 80. What? Why? Almost every single reading I've gotten has been exactly 120 over 80. That's a normal reading for most non-obese Americans. This is a crazy nitpick. This drill bit looks like a giant penis, and no one looked at the props guy and said, Really? Jeremy points out Boner. Also, if your dick is shaped like that, I feel sorry for the women that have to deal with this. I mean, you're not touching any walls with that thing. Great. Splendid. Here's another movie that wants to give us mass suicide visuals for the clout, I guess. I don't f***ing know. It's like they watched Matrix Resurrections and said, let's do that. You know, you could have had these water people hypnotize everyone on the boat into falling asleep. Instead, you chose their Pied Piper melody to be a suicide song. Why? F***ing why? This is so unnecessary. You don't know what clout means either, but that's a whole nother conversation. But this is the classic depiction of a siren, a water-dwelling entity that lures men to their deaths with a song. You're sending it because the Matrix 4 had something similar? Okay, you're basically sending Jabaro, and we got major problems if that's the case, home skillet. 
Also, I'm not sure I care how noble the water people are or how true a gripe they really have. They just killed a ton of people unnecessarily, so they just lost my vote. From their perspective, these people are invading their home and taking a valuable resource. I don't care who you are. You invade my home and steal my shit, you're probably waking up dead. How the hell do you wake up dead? Because you're alive when you go to sleep. Wait, just tell me you can So you telling me. me that you can go to bed dead and wake up alive? You can't go to bed dead, man. That shit would be redundant. Just tell me No, who? it wouldn't. Because you can go to bed and not be dead and you can die but not be in a bed. But you are in a bed, man. That's how you wake up dead in the first place, fool. Damn! That's some quantum shit right there, man. What are you talking about? You should be teaching classes. You stay dropping out. Wait, who condoms? It has to be. Suspecting the Wakandans before the French. <laughs> the French can't fight. Ben Ash. What the f*** are we doing here with the font and the color changes for the subtitles? French was in white, Wakandan is in yellow, and now Avatarian is in blue, and the font is super gothic for no reason. So he points out they're using different colors for different languages and still doesn't get it? I think that one day artificial intelligence is going to kill us all. Agreed. And that day is probably next Tuesday. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. My AI isn't like the movies, mother. Marvel tries to act like Avengers Age of Ultron didn't happen. You mean the movie that presented a viable AI system whose sacrifice helped save the universe? The Black Panther is a relic, mother. I wasn't trying to save the mental with the herb. I was trying to save my brother. But still, an herb that gives you super strength is pretty useful. You think she doesn't know that? You're quite literally showing on screen her working alternative to the herb, which grants the user superhuman strength, speed, and durability. Uh, I'm gonna need some renowned physics minds to weigh in here on the ability of shoe fish to generate enough lift to make the entire man fly, and I'm guessing they're going to give me a big old nope about this horse. Oh, come the hell on. Are we seriously doing this? Since when do we question the physics as presented in comic book movies? Besides the fact that Namor doesn't actually use his wings to fly, you gonna hold Superman to that same standard? He doesn't even have foot wings. He can fly just because. Spider-Man has on boots but can still stick to walls. Hell, Captain America was injected with performance-enhancing drugs that turned him into a superhuman. Uh, that last one's realistic, though. <clears throat> We all know taking roids doesn't give you abilities like these. Take Chun-Ri Kim, a Korean bodybuilder. She's massive and clearly juiced to the gills, but on a Korean reality show, she got absolutely demolished in a feat of strength and athletic ability. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think she's going to be flipping a motorcycle anytime soon. All I'm saying is none of this shit is realistic, so it's incredibly disingenuous to start treating the physics of comic book movies as sins now. That ship sailed decades ago. I have more soldiers than this land has flakes of grass. Numbers and graphs, or it didn't happen. Namor can manipulate sea life, which means he quite literally has all the animals in the ocean. I think we ought to take his word here. Namor's people sneakily place this machine here and it's all the bullshit. See, I knew I chose my adversary well. This sin is for pronouncing Namor as Namor. So I thought I'd go ahead and put that to bed. When Bill Everett created the character way back in 1939, he came up with the name Namor by writing the word Roman backwards. That should be your first clue as to the pronunciation of his name, considering you don't pronounce Roman as Romaine. So since we're being pedantic, I've taken the liberty of recording myself saying Roman and Namor a few times, and I've reversed the track. Take a listen. Roman. Namor. Roman. Namor. Namor. Roman. Namor. Roman.
So I think I've definitively debunked this talking point, no matter what your cartoon says. Call me no more. Director said give him a red carrot because crudite is the new apple. Moving the goalposts. I am still struggling to believe that vibranium exists outside of Wakanda. It can definitely be difficult to reconcile what had previously been gospel with what is now reality, but we all go through it eventually, in one form or another. Eh, not if you're an Islam apostate. We don't call that difficulty, we call that getting killed. I do have an idea. Hmm. I'm going to need the princess. This big idea is to meet up with Everett Ross on his jog, and it is in no way clear why Cherie was needed to accomplish this. Why is it so difficult for this man to pronounce names? They say Cherie's name a million times in this movie. Who the hell is Cherie? It's not the Americans that I'm worried about. This tracks. America is too busy tearing itself apart to be much of a bother to anyone else on Earth, except all the countries where we have military bases, and the countries we are actively bombing but just not talking about. The Americans are quite ready to do violence, and the Queen of Wakanda should absolutely be concerned about that. As they have explained many times, including the opening scene that you totally watched and sinned, America does not want smoke with Wakanda, at least not militarily. Wakanda is the most technologically advanced society on the planet, and they have an indestructible wonder metal. If Wakanda wanted to erase the United States off the map, it could be done. They took on Thanos' army and are still standing. They are essentially what aliens are to us here in reality. Our most powerful weapon is a nuke. What happens when your nuke gets absorbed as an energy source? You didn't think to call? Now why would I have your number? You don't have his number, but you can find his exact location on the planet? If you can do that, you can get his number. Just say you wanted to surprise him. And this ties into what I just talked about. Wakanda's technology, and the fact they can infiltrate the U.S. this easily, shows how superfluous America's technology is in comparison. They communicate with vibranium beads, bro. Phones are last gen. 30 of their top guys, two of our best officers. Friends of mine. If you thought the Wakandans killed two of your friends, would you not start the conversation with that instead of the fun banter? I'm going to antagonize two superheroes that helped kill Thanos without my gun. Brilliant! Is it the makeup? No. It's the wrong shade, isn't it? It's the right shade. 2440, you look good. Movie creates time for this instead of allowing the characters to take an existential threat to their nation seriously because Marvel is supposed to be the fun comic book universe. I've never understood this criticism. Since when do movies not have time for levity? Especially Marvel films, which have had comedic moments from the first film in the series. I could understand if the entire film undercuts its tone with moments like these, but it doesn't, so you're like white girls in horror movies, tripping over nothing. Oh shit, am I getting recruited? No. But she kinda is. The characters may not know it, but the audience sure does. It's almost like the characters were the ones speaking though, so the audience's knowledge is the audience's knowledge. You can come to Wakanda, conscious or unconscious. You need to be conscious of the way that you look. Walking around here with that ash on your head. <laughs> Moments like these really confuse the tone of this movie. It goes from being serious to making jokes and then back again in a way that undermines the seriousness of what's going on and makes the jokes feel poorly timed. Except it doesn't. This is the tail end of the first act of the film. Oversimplifying, but the first act is where a conflict is presented. Typically, at that part of a story, you'd want to contain your comedic elements there, especially if a theme of the story is lost, which in this case, it is. This sets the audience up for the big emotional moments, such as the death of the queen in the second act and Shuri's Black Panther reveal at the beginning of the third act. You don't see these types of jokes after the queen dies, and there's a reason for that. The film's tone has shifted. You, like these other idiot film critics on YouTube probably didn't even realize a film can have a deliberate tone shift, but I assure you, that is a thing. You are also forgetting the cultural aspect of these types of jokes. As a black person, I feel like I can speak for all black people when I say, we joke with each other like this all the time, even in so-called inappropriate moments. It's called bagging or, in the young folks' parlance, roasting. She called her head ashy. You probably don't even get the context for that, but it's something we say all the time. My point is, this film was made by a black filmmaker with an almost entirely black cast. There are going to be in-jokes like that simply due to that fact alone. But again, I see you're jumping on the Marvel now undercut serious moments with jokes bandwagon. And like all bandwagons, that's for followers that don't actually know what they're talking about. What about the Wakanda fight in Infinity War, where there were multiple jokes back to back to back during a fight for the universe. How much for the gun? Not for sale. Okay, how much for the arm? Oh, I'll get that arm. You okay? Right, Notice you've copied my beard. Oh, by the way, this is a friend of mine, Tree. I am through! I am Steve Rogers. Oh, but that doesn't count and was different because some lame-ass excuse, right? 
Give me a break. I got 2065 byte encryption on that thing. I got a 2065 byte encryption once. Doctor gave me a cream. Jeremy's VD counts as a sin. I had to build a functional quantum computer just to crack my own encryption. And that's all I ever did with it. And you know that based on what exactly? What is it you're building here? Is it static? I said don't touch anything. Cherie's question has nothing to do with touching. While well, technically she did caress the blueprints slightly, Riri didn't see that, and this question only proves that Cherie saw the blueprints which you have hung up in plain sight on this board. I don't have a problem with this sin. Outside of you saying she didn't see her touching the board, which you couldn't have known since we aren't shown her perspective. But who the hell is Cherie? I get it, it's not a typical Anglo name, but they say her name in the movie because she is the protagonist. How is it even remotely possible to mispronounce the protagonist of a film's name? that is spoken multiple times. It's like that time you called Professor Xavier, Xavier. There's an entire YouTube channel dedicated to siding to me. There's also a whole YouTube channel dedicated to whatever don't hug me I'm scared is. So don't get too excited. YouTube elitism. Once we get to the other side of the bridge, we can lose them in Boston traffic. The only thing I've ever lost in Boston traffic is my patience. And I don't see how that's gonna help anyone in this situation. Jeremy says what the movie is saying and still treats it as a sin ex machina. Oh, he got Iron Man suit. After seeing what the Dora Milaje are capable of, you would think the team of agents tasked with the mission of capturing a group of Wakandans would be more prepared and less surprised by this. Prepare for women with indestructible spears, but don't be surprised by Iron Girl Jr. Got it. After everything we've done for whale conservation, those dickheads are on the Avatarian side. That can't be a real question. He says whale conservation and doesn't get the irony. Now I know a few of y'all don't get it either, so let me spell it out for some of you slower folks. Who are the whales being protected from? Stew on that until you understand why his question was stupid. Oh, you're making a humpback show jump now too? How are you any better than SeaWorld, Namor? Stop using sea creatures for your own porpoises. Calling a very obvious orca a humpback, even if I liked the porpoise joke. Cherie was unconscious from the crash, but a splash of water wakes her up. Cold water stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which can wake up an unconscious person. Smelling salts have a similar physiological action. Here's a bit of product placement weirdness. He gets out of a Toyota, but the other two government-issued black SUVs are a Chevy and a Hyundai. It's almost like that's evidence it's not product placement. You will be stripped of your rank. As general of Wakanda's armies. This seems overly harsh. The enemy attacked in greater numbers and without any notice. She at most should be busted down to colonel. Overly harsh? Her mission resulted in a hostile enemy kidnapping the widowed queen's only surviving child. I'll say that again. Shuri is Ramonda's only surviving family member. Okoye is lucky to still have her ashy ass head. Someone's gonna have to fix that. Clay? They're gonna have to fix the clay? Creo. Did Shuri have her earrings with her? I lost track of them in the North Atlantic, but the people who took her spoke Yucatec Mayan. I realize this is an AI, but she asked about earrings and got an answer about languages. You apparently don't realize this is an AI. You know what the I stands for? Intelligence. And as you remove the scene from its context, you're treating your audience as if they don't have any. Grio was the interface that allowed Ramonda to speak to Ross, and the conversation was about Shuri being kidnapped. Since it's an AI, obviously it understood the language was pertinent information. Otro que lo han buscado con mal en su corazón. No, I'm sure that ill in their hearts clause is kind of everything though, right? She's going to seek them out with a pure heart and therefore might return. You say this as if she's trying to convince Nakia to not go. She simply warned her that going there with ill intentions does not usually end well. How? How is never as important as why? Then why do you start your flashback position showing us how instead of immediately telling us why? I think you've got your definitions confused. He is telling us why. He is who he is because of what happened to his mother and her people. That's the why. Hell, the how isn't really explained. Some magic shit turned my people into sea creatures is not an explanation. The plan gave me wings on my ankles and ears that point into the clouds. I was a mutant. Your people all changed after drinking the blue juice, so they are all mutants. Sure, you're different, but you're not special. That difference is what makes him special. He's the only one that doesn't need water to breathe on land, has winged ankles, can fly, and is far stronger than any of them. And let me take this time to explain something for the lay people. Namor is a mutant. His people 
are mutates. There is a difference. Mutants possess the X gene, a genetic marker that was placed in humanity by the Celestials. They are born, not bred. Human mutates are people and their descendants that were changed by some force, such as a potion or an irradiated spider. Yes, Spider-Man is a human mutate. This will probably be explained in the MCU once the X-Men are introduced, but it's pretty cool that they introduced Namor first, an homage to him being the very first Marvel character. The problem with all underwater human societies is that human biology is clearly not adapted to living in the water, so it will never make sense that they all have normal arms and legs as we do, and it makes even less sense that they would be as prepared to fight on land as they are. As these are human mutates, their bodies have adapted to being underwater, but being that they were changed after evolving into modern humans, they still mostly have traits of normal human beings. This is why Spider-Man still has two arms and legs and not eight appendages, and why he doesn't produce silk outside of that stupid Raimi invention. They've only been underwater for a couple hundred years. That's not long enough for visible evolution to take place, especially if they were already well adapted through the mutagen itself. For centuries, the surface nations have conquered and enslaved people like us. Really? You live underwater in a protective bubble. Other than general pollution, how are the surface people conquering you when they don't even know about you? Did you just fall asleep while he was talking about his mother? He quite literally explained that the Spanish came and conquered the Mayan people, an event he lived through, and he is speaking to an African woman. Do you not understand how both these ethnic groups were colonized and enslaved by Europeans? You just did the you were never a slave thing, which is a fallacious argument that misses the point by a mile. The point is, never again. There isn't a nation that would have plundered Wakanda if given a chance. Sorry, this is a nice line, but it's demonstrably untrue. Many nations are so used to having nothing that the thought of stealing from a wavering nation wouldn't even be an option. And at least a few nations still have morals. In what reality are you living in, CinemaSins? Because it sure as f*** ain't this one. The only nations that wouldn't plunder a resource-rich African nation are... are... Damn, I'm having a hard time thinking of something other than they're too far. Even the Chinese are trying to exploit Africa, and that's real-life Africa with boring shit like gold and diamonds. We're talking about Wakanda, a place that has a metal that literally advanced their technology into the sci-fi age. This man says nations have morals. That's comedy. Then when the threat of this nation has been eliminated, the scientists will be returned to Wakanda. Anyone trusting or rooting for Namor at this point is a pure psychopath. He's evil, he uses evil means, and he kills innocent people, and he's bloodthirsty. I don't think anyone is explicitly rooting for the film's antagonist, but sometimes violence needs to be met with violence. If I'm more powerful than you, and I sense you have bad intentions, I'm taking you out. Namor isn't evil, he's morally gray. If he were evil, he would be a tyrant to his people, but he's not. This is exactly who Namor is in the comics, an anti-hero who's often at odds with other heroes. What type of offensive action? Why is Vice President Elaine even here? Who and what and why is she? And so help me God, if you point me to a Marvel TV show, I will kick you in the digital crotch really f***ing hard. Okay, how about a movie? Black Widow's in credits, a movie you saw in Sin that contained a scene with this character. Maybe you'd like a shot at the man responsible for your sister's death. I can't wait to find out how Yelena goes after Hawkeye, a man that I'm sure her sister never talked about, and she will somehow easily be convinced as a bad guy, and then will... So why are you pretending to not know a character you definitely saw? And again with this, I shouldn't have to watch outside media to blah blah blah, which is a sorry evolution of the books don't matter nonsense. That doesn't work here because the MCU is interconnected and has been for the past 15 years. If you don't want to watch the shows, that's on you, but you cannot then treat not knowing who the characters are as sins of a film. You can't willingly miss pieces of relevant media, then complain about not knowing anything. And that's on top of you lying about not knowing her and this film explaining who she is. Are you telling me that after the events of Infinity War, the Wakandans didn't think that making a more formidable energy barrier that you can't swim under was at the top of the to-do list? You say that as if Thanos' army used this river to attack this landlocked country. Doing that would cut off the water supply and the fishing routes that the Jabari use for food, being pescatarians. I guess they can just control water. It might have been cool to talk about that or show us how that works. Really anything to make this random flooding seem less random. So the earlier part of the film where they showed they had water bombs didn't count? And think about what you're asking for. You're saying the film should stop its story and explain, hey, we can control water to some degree, here's how, instead of simply showing you they can do this. Do you know how movies work? 
Oh, look, more suicide imagery. I hope they do this every battle. But it's not suicide if someone forces you to do it. Therefore, this is homicide imagery. And what's your problem with this anyway? I understand that you advocate for suicide awareness on your Twitter and whatnot, but since when do movies have to protect someone's sensibilities? Since when do movies not challenge one's thinking and perspectives? This society has gotten to the point where we can't even depict villains without some deranged lunatic on Twitter complaining about the tactics a villain uses. It's like... It's a villain, you idiot. Do you want them to kindly ask the protagonist to fuck off? Fiction does not have to conform to your politics, your morals, or your common sense. I'd argue fiction should challenge what we consider to be righteous, because how do you know you're right if you've never engaged what is wrong? Understanding thy enemy is how you defeat thy enemy. The fish man. You're under attack by an underwater army using water bombs, and you're surprised their leader is the fish man? As per usual, CinemaSins is manipulating a scene. Man Ape isn't showing surprise that this attack is being conducted by Namor, he's responding to seeing him and having an opportunity to immediately engage him. Not saying it's impossible, but it is really f***ing confusing how the queen got Riri up and out of the water but still managed to drown. If you understand that it's not impossible, how is it still confusing you? She saved someone and in the process drowned herself. This has happened to plenty of lifeguards in reality. This movie is a dick to Cherie's emotions. And you're a dick to Cherie's name. I'm hungry. And... She says this, then turns on the TV, and Anderson Cooper is back to say the very piece of news she wanted Bilbo to learn. You quite literally show evidence that she had the TV paused. Here's a scene where Cherie is going to figure out how to synthetically recreate a magic powers bequeathing flower faster than Tony Stark invented time travel in Endgame. Literally untrue. Stark was able to figure out time travel in an afternoon. There's no way you think synthesizing a plant they already have knowledge of is more complex than figuring out how to navigate time due to a conversation. Come the hell off it. You have such a rebellious spirit. Why did you join the Dora? Why do you care? Anika is great and deserved to be a bigger part of this movie. Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche? At best, this was a wash. So Grio, the AI, will now 3D print a synthetic heart flower that will give abilities to whoever eats it. And that's a lot to ask of 3D printable materials. Let's think about this for a second. We are currently able to 3D print proteins and cellulose. This is a plant, which is mostly cellulose. Raw vibranium gives off a certain type of radiation that imbues the plant with its abilities, and that is what gives the Black Panther power. The radiation. You know, like the Hulk. Was my mother's life not worth eternal war? Of course it was. Hold the f***ing phone here, folks. I humbly submit that no single life is worth eternal war. God f***ing damn. It's very easy to sit in a cushy recording studio and say something like that. Her entire family is gone, and the last member was taken by a dude that wasn't even mad at them specifically. I'm sorry, but from her perspective, that makes sense. It's also almost certainly hyperbole, meant as an homage to the Black Panther and Namor beef that has been eternal in the comics. What matters? It's what I want, and what I want is Namor dead. In this movie, both Queen Ramonda and Shuri put their personal feelings ahead of what is good for their people. It's confusing, and I don't know why M'Baku doesn't challenge her for the mantle of Black Panther right now. That's the complexity of the character. She didn't become the Black Panther out of some noble goal of protecting her people. She did it for revenge. It's hilarious how you sit here video after video and complain about these movies not doing something different, but when we get a hero that is doing it for all the wrong reasons, you clutch your pearls. And he can't challenge her for the mantle. That's not what the challenge is for. You challenge for the throne. God damn, we had an entire movie explaining this. If you go to war for vengeance, it will not feel the whole left from her loss. But if she goes to war to preemptively avoid a larger war, like as a strategic decision, then it's okay and the whole insider will be filled? No, you went on a whole ass irrelevant rant that had nothing to do with what Nakia said. Her point is that this campaign will not bring her mother back, whether she fights for vengeance or for noble reasons. I do not like this Ironheart suit design one bit. Okay, so? All these women warriors jump off the boat with a single tether tied to their lower backs, and the Wakandan chiropractic industry is about to have a moment. I'm just going to take this time to point out the dude that points out suicide awareness, a real medical and social issue, is still promoting chiropractic, a scientifically disproven form of quackery. How I die? Wakanda forever! Did Cherie know those engines were still functional, or was this a lucky guess? That ship exploded into a million pieces. There was no reason to believe this would work. What Jeremy isn't showing you is that Shuri tapped a device on her wrist that controlled the engine. Now, I'm just a dude playing a dude that's sending another dude, but my common sense tells me that the very advanced technology in her suit would let her know if the ship was still functional. The Black Panther sends her regards. 
but she will not be joining us today. I, Mbaku, leader of the Jabari tribe, son of Wakanda, wish to challenge for the throne. Well, this is just a fun way to raise several questions about the succession of the mantle and the throne, but not answer a single one of them. Again, the throne and the Black Panther are two separate entities. This has been a thing since Civil War, where T'Challa's father was the king, but T'Challa himself was the panther. Did you think that old-ass man was running around as the Black Panther? 